This is Paint Life TV. I'm Chrissy Idaho Painter, and today I got a superstar guest with me today. It is. I'm Captain Zach. And today we're going to be talking about doing touch ups and the art of doing touch ups. And doing touch ups just takes a little bit of skill. It's a craft that, with the proper tools and the proper training, you can do it and do it well. You can take a nick like this on this cabinet door and touch it up, and you'll never see it. And some of the, the principles we're using here, that could be used on walls and doing other touch ups throughout the house on your tram. And in order to do touch-ups and do them properly, you gotta have the right tools, right, Zach? That's correct. And so you got a few tools right here. I think, so why don't you show us what you got? Yeah, so I got a, an older sanding block just in case there's any rough spots on the edges or something like that. Uh, I keep that with me while I'm doing touch-ups on cabinets. And then I also have one of these two-edge knives or a five-in-one or something like that just to clean up some nicks or any foreign objects I may have gotten in the coating. So if you have something on the surface right here, you can just use that to scrape it off. That's correct. And there's, a multiple, there's multiple different uses for that two-edge knife, but that's an amazing knife. Now you also have a big old arsenal of touch-up brushes, don't you? Yeah, a bunch of different sizes and types. I use whatever I need to to get the job done. So why would you have so many different sizes of these touch-up brushes? Because you really don't want to use something like this on a small nick like that if you were going to just swipe it and just leave it because it's going to leave a whole bunch of brush strokes and it's just not going to look very well. So I'd use something like this, a nice little small one, and I would just dab it on there and you'll never be able to see it. Okay, you also have, like, I see you got a spray can over here and that's in your toolbox of touch-up stuff, right? Yeah, so this is made with the lacquer that we're using on these cabinets. It's uh, tinted to match that, and we get it um, the same time we get the lacquer, they just mix it up in a couple of cans for us, and that way we can spray the face of them if there's a big nick or something like that where uh, a brush is just gonna show up no matter what you do. The spray cans come in handy in case you have to come back to the customer's house and do a touch up and you need to maybe respray the face of a door instead of loading up a whole HVLP sprayer. You got a spray can of the exact color of the lacquer and these spray cans work amazing. You can spray a door and it's gonna look just like it was sprayed with an HVLP sprayer. We also have these type of brushes. This is a white china bristle brush and we use white instead of black because these are more softer and more subtle. Hopefully I said that word right but they're softer. And when do we use something like this, Zach? Um, so we would use this if any of these edges were light or if there's holes, because the system we use, we have to drill holes so that they hang on the clothes hanger. So we'll fill those holes and then we'll use this to go and touch them all up. And in certain cases, if it's uh, you know, some on the back side, and we can get away with doing that on uh, a place where you wouldn't normally see it, uh, we can go ahead and use this as well. If you had to do a big surface area like the back side of the door, I would never uh, brush the front side of a door because it, this will leave a pretty good finish, but it's not a sprayed on finish. It's gonna leave a little bit of roping to it, but you can brush the back side of a door and get good, really good results. We do use rubber gloves, don't we? You got yeah, some gloves got on. Some what are right those now. things? Uh, these are some Raven gloves and they're going to be on the store here pretty soon, so. Yeah, so any of the tools are typically not all the tools but some of the tools and accessories that we really like we do sell them in our store on our website go to our website theidahopainter.com or our store the actual link to that is store.theidahopainter.com and you can find some of these really cool products that we like we found these raven gloves a while ago we really like them they're dust free nitrile gloves and they work really well and they're very resistant to chemicals and they're, and they're really we, tough too so we use them on all kinds of stuff so if you have any tips or tricks comments also leave them in the comments section below we would love to hear what you have to say if you got some something to share about doing touch-ups that is different than what we do just leave it below we would love to hear it and our community would love to hear it if you don't follow us on Facebook check us out on Facebook we've got a really cool group called paint life members you can go get all kinds of questions answered there from all kinds of people in our group and we also follow that group also but we're gonna deal with this, this nick right here now, Zach. So what are some of the things you're gonna do when dealing with this nick? You're gonna select the right brush. So select the right brush. And, and then you don't wanna just brush it like I was saying earlier, you just wanna daub it. So we're just gonna take a little bit of lacquer on the end of this. So you're kinda of just using a daubing method where you're just gonna daub it on that nick and not brush it on. That's and correct. How, how many coats is it gonna take? Um, it's typically gonna take about two to three coats. I would say with this one, it's probably gonna be three. And then you wanna be careful with the, the following coats as well. You don't wanna just brush those cause it's just gonna pull the lacquer back up. So we're just gonna take a little bit on the end of this brush here 
and then just dab it. So you're just gonna dab it on there. We're not gonna worry about priming it. It's just a small nick. The previous coating underneath was lacquer and just gonna dab it right on there. Now the lacquer is really thin. We're not spraying it on. It's really thin, so we're just gonna dab it on. And like Zach said, we'll let that set for about five minutes in two or three coats. We do have another situation right here. We've got a door face, and this door face right here had some blemishes on it, and we're gonna, instead of you know daubing or touching it up, we're gonna have to sand it, and then we're gonna have to reshoot it. So I'm gonna show you Zach's got the spray can of lacquer. We've already sanded it and it's looking pretty good. Just a final sand. We're gonna dust this thing off and then we'll set it on our spray twirly right here from paint line. And this thing is really cool because we can just spin this thing around and shoot all four sides of this thing and all four edges of it. But the spray can works really well for this. So you go ahead and spray that yeah, there, Zach. And this is really just the perfect situation. We're gonna have to touch this up anyway. And instead of going through the whole process of setting up an HVLP, we're just gonna take this bomb can that we already have laying at the job site, or in this case, in the academy, and we're gonna go ahead and spray this really so quick. So it's the exact same color. You're probably just gonna hit it one coat, one nice thick coat. Yeah, one, one coat on this. Don't have to worry about running because it's sitting here on this spray totally right here. It's um, sitting face down and it's not hanging. So go ahead and spray that there, Zach. Now you'd typically be wearing a respirator doing this, but for purposes of this video, so we can talk and work at the same time, we're not using a respirator, but always wear a respirator. So that's looking pretty good in that light right there. I'm liking that. So we're gonna let that set. If we needed to recode it, we can recode it in about five minutes because it's a lacquer. So there's a couple scenarios. We're gonna, you know, a couple scenarios with um, spraying. So we just sprayed this one. I'm gonna set it aside. So you, we have this China bristle brush right here, Zach. And um, we'll set this one here. We'll just do the back side. If you're gonna um, brush the, the back of this, just show them what it looks like brushing this thing. So this is a, a wider brush so you can cover a larger surface area with that. You're not gonna be using something this tiny <laughs> to try to. Right brush for the right job. The right brush for the right job. And this, these artist brushes, once again, we have, I mean, just a whole bunch of different styles and sizes of these things. We do have a set that we do sell on our store that's a very versatile set that you can use to do these touch-ups and these the we use these not only for doing lacquers but when we're doing trim 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 touch-ups on uh, the insides of houses to all the woodwork so now zach's getting he's getting a bunch of lacquer on there that he's going to lay that out I'll hold this for you now. So that's what it looks like if you're brushing the lacquer on. This is the back side of a door right here. And you know, I, I would be okay with the back side of the door being brushed in cer certain circumstances. But if you can spray it, it's gonna be best to spray it. That is looking pretty good. That's gonna gel out pretty nicely. We'll set that thing aside. Looking pretty good there, Zach. So there's what it looks like. There's a few tips and tricks. One thing, choosing the right tools, choose the right brush for the right touch up and just daub it on, right Zach? Daub it on. Don't brush it, just daub it. If you got any tips and tricks, like we said, just leave them down in the questions or comments below. We would love to hear what you have to say on the art of doing touch ups. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you have, we'll see you on our next video. Out. Out.